Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we will investigate what potential difference is in a circuit. Let us join Bruce as he uses an electric circuit to help us understand this concept. The concept of potential difference deals with how much energy is being transferred per unit charge as the charge moves around the circuit. Now, did you get that? Think about it for a moment. As the unit charge passes through the circuit, it is doing work. In other words, energy is being transferred. Let's have a look at a demonstration. The components in a complete circuit, in this case a light bulb, need a power supply for them to work, like this battery of cells. When this battery of cells is connected in a complete circuit, a potential difference is set up across the light bulb. Now why do you think this is happening? Well, units of charge now move through the light bulb. And as the charge moves, energy is transferred to that light bulb. Well, how do we know this? Clearly, the fact that the light bulb is glowing proves that energy is being transferred. In a circuit, we are dealing with the electrical energy of a charge as it moves through that circuit. You know that we measure the current in a circuit using an ammeter. The reading on the ammeter gives us the number of coulombs of charge passing through a point in the circuit per second. But how can we measure the amount of energy that is being transferred per unit charge into other forms of energy? Let's understand this by looking at an animated model of conventional current. Before we join Bruce as he looks at his circuit animation, we need to define conventional current. The direction of the current by convention is from the positive end of the battery through the circuit to the negative end of the battery, which is also referred to as conventional. Now let's rejoin Bruce. When the battery is connected, a difference in potential energy arises across the light bulb in the circuit. Suppose each of the charge carriers in region A has 12 units of potential energy, and in region B, the charge carriers have two units of potential energy. What do you notice? Well, there is a difference in the values of potential energy across these terminals. One is higher than the other. We say that there is a potential energy difference of 10 units because A has a higher potential energy than B. This is the signal for the charge to begin moving. Now, if we have a potential difference between two points, in which direction will the charge now travel? Will it move from a region of low potential to high potential, or from a region of high potential to low potential? The charge moves through the circuit from a position of high electrical potential energy to one of lower electrical potential energy. Because charge moves through the circuit from a region of high potential to a region of low potential, we can compare the difference in electrical potential energy to the difference in gravitational potential energy. At the top of a waterfall, the water has higher potential energy, and at the bottom, it has lower potential energy. Water falls down the waterfall because of this difference in a potential energy. In the circuit, charge moves through the light bulb because there is a difference in potential applied across the light bulb. Its electrical energy is transferred to heat and light. Similarly, an electric motor turns when there is a potential difference applied across it. Now let's use what Bruce has shown us to define potential difference. Remember that if energy is transferred, work is done. Therefore, we can define potential difference between two points in a circuit as the amount of work done per unit positive charge. We can translate this into an equation. V equals W divided by Q, where W equals the amount of work done in joules. Q equals the amount of charge that passes through in coulombs. V equals potential difference in volts. Now, let's rejoin Bruce to learn more about potential difference. We often abbreviate the words potential difference to PD. The PD, or potential difference, between two points in an electrical circuit is measured using a voltmeter. 
A voltmeter is connected across the light bulb. Its positive terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal connected to the negative terminal of the battery. This is different to the ammeter. The ammeter measures the flow of electrical charge and is connected in series in the electrical circuit. The voltmeter, on the other hand, measures potential difference and is connected across the light bulb in parallel. Now let's take a reading using the voltmeter. Here is the voltmeter connected across the light bulb. I'll close the switch and we'll let the reading stabilize. And we can see that it's reading 4,48 volts. So what does this reading mean? Well, it simply means that 4,48 joules of energy is transferred to the light bulb for every coulomb of charge that passes through it. So using our SI units, we can simply say that the potential difference across the light bulb is 4,48 volts. We can therefore say that one volt is the potential difference across two points when one joule of energy is transferred per coulomb of charge passing through it. One volt is therefore one joule per coulomb. Now that we understand what potential difference is and to measure it, we need to understand another important concept, the EMF of the cell. We will use this wonderful simulation to understand what EMF is. Here we can see a very simple series circuit that has been set up with one light bulb, a cell and a switch. Note that the switch is open and the light bulb does not shine, so we know that there is no current in the circuit. We will now place a voltmeter across the ends of the cell. We can see that even though there is no current in the circuit, the voltmeter reads 9 volts. What does this mean? This means that there is a potential difference between the ends of the cell of 9 volts. Now, let us close the switch and see what happens to the voltmeter reading. We can see that the switch has been closed because the light bulb shines. What do you notice about the voltmeter reading? Can you see that the number is lower? It now reads 8,42 volts. The original voltage that we measured across the cell is called the EMF of the cell. This is the voltage across the cell when there is no current in the circuit. The EMF is the voltage across the cell where there is no current in the circuit. The EMF is the maximum volts the cell or battery can supply the circuit. When we close the switch, the voltmeter reading changed to 8,42 volts. What we measured here was the potential difference of the circuit. The potential difference is what the cell or battery supplies the circuit when the current flows. Let us summarize this. The EMF is the voltage across a battery when no current flows. The potential difference is the voltage across a battery when current does flow. Grade 10s, you'll find more information about circuits and potential difference at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.